Hey there, it's Ruben Fleischer. I'm the director of Venom, and you're watching the Venom vlog with Seat, my man. Uh, thank you guys so much for being fans of the character that we all love so much, and I can't wait for you to see the movie. I hope you love it. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna to check out this article on Bleeding Cool, which I briefly mentioned at the end of the last episode of the Venom Vlog, where uh, we're gonna dive into the history, I guess, some new history that they're adding for Venom. Um, but uh, it some of this was set up. If you read the Venom, the Venom in Vietnam storyline, the one shot, if you read that, that kind of did set this up. So this isn't like a big shock to us. I actually been waiting for a while for when they're gonna pull the thread on that storyline because I was like, oh, why set that up if they're not going to do anything with it? And I thought, oh, maybe Donny Cates will somehow tie that in later on in his run. But it looks like Marvel's finally taking that little plot thread and they're tying it into this other plot thread that was left over from Grant Morrison when he wrote New X-Men, where he introduced this concept where Wolverine was in the Weapon X program, but the X was actually a Roman numeral and it meant Weapon 10, uh, not just Weapon X. And that if you go back to Weapon 1, that was actually Captain America. The Project Rebirth was called Cap... Uh, it was for Captain America that created him. The Super Soldier program was essentially Weapon 1. And that everything after, from Weapon 2 to 10, or you know, up to Wolverine, was a way for them to create more Super Soldiers, like different governments of the world and stuff. And so, I don't know. I, I kind of like that idea. I was like, oh, that's a neat thing to introduce. But like typical Grant Morrison, he introduced it but he just left it there for some other writer to take over. And now we're finally 15 years later diving into this. And they did kind of touch on some of this in the Ultimate Comics. They tried to, where they try to link some of these characters' backstories together, um, but they didn't really do a good job at it. And then they end up, you know, eliminating the Ultimate Universe. So this is nice to kind of go back and see them add these things in and even bring characters like Brute Force back, which I really don't care too much about, but I just think it's funny that they're like, hey, we can add Brute Force in. Because, you know, Grant Morrison, when he was doing New X-Men, I think right before that he did We Three, which they mentioned here, which was a, a pretty cool book, actually. It's like Homeward Bound with mech robots. It's like a robot, it's a dog, a cat, and a rabbit in robot suits, like, you know, fighting and stuff. It's really, that's a cool story. You should check it out. Um, as long as you like Grant Morrison stuff, because it is weird and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so... This is what we know so far before the this new retcon is going to come in. We have Weapon Zero, which is Isaiah Bradley, who is a, a black soldier that signed up for the super soldier program. And they tested on him. I think it gave him super strength, but I don't think it did much else. I don't think he ages differently or anything like that. Um, so it wasn't like a full success as far as I remember. Uh, but Isaiah Bradley, his grandson, does become Patriot on the Young Avengers books, which is pretty cool. And uh, I think they did a book called uh, Captain America of Red, White, and Black, which was my first introduction to Isaiah Bradley. And I believe that was his story. And um, hopefully I'm not confusing two different stories because sometimes I do that. But Isaiah Bradley was is a really neat character. And I personally would, would have considered him part of the Weapon 1 program because eventually that serum still was used in a tweaked a little bit, but still used on Steve Rogers. So to me, I don't think there's enough of a difference between those two serums to label him as his own weapon but anyway they do so they call him weapon zero here at least this is what bleeding cool added him as um and then weapon one steve rogers weapon two grand morrison hinted it was an animal soldier program and i think that was just his meta way of referencing we three but it looks like they're going to kind of retcon that and make it brute force they're going to tie brute force into all this uh weapon three i don't know much about it was a mutant with uh, some kind of skin thing uh used as an other world agent so i don't know much about weapon three Weapon 4, 5, and 6 apparently were convicts from different ethnic minorities. Um, I don't remember too much about those weapons either. I do remember Weapon 7, which is Nuke. It was called Project Homegrown, and it was a Vietnam thing. And so uh, so he was a soldier created that, you know, ended up fighting Captain America, Black Panther, Punisher, Wolverine. Like, everybody's fought Nuke almost. And, uh, yeah, he's just like this crazy dude uh, with, like, a Brillo cut. <laughs> you know, like, kind of looks like Guile from Street Fighter. Just his hair's not as tall. Um but yeah, so anyway, so I knew about Nuke before, and Weapon 8 was like experiments on different criminals and psychopaths. Weapon 9 was, uh, was originally supposed to be Deadpool, but I think they folded him into the Weapon X program, and then Weapon you know, X obviously is Wolverine. Then comes the Grant Morrison stuff where he was like, all right, Weapon X wasn't the last one. Uh, you think, you know, like we thought it was the la last one. We thought Weapon X was its only thing. We thought it was just Weapon X. We didn't know there was other 
programs until Grant Morrison introduced that concept. And then when he did, he brought up that Weapon 12 was Huntsman. I think this was Grant Morrison that did that. But Weapon 13 is Phantom X. That was Grant Morrison. And Weapon 14 were the Stepford Cuckoos. And then Weapon 15 was Ultimatum, which is like the Super Sentinel thing. And Weapon 16 was the All God, uh, a living, vile religion. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, definitely Grant Morrison ideas. So all this ties into this issue that came out. Ethan Sachs is the writer, and the storyline is basically Captain America and Wolverine go on this adventure together to learn more about their past. The Wolverine finds out there could be more to them and that there other he knows about other weapons between one and him, like between Cap and Wolverine. He already knows that there are other weapons, but now he's on this path to find them now that Wolverine is back from the dead. And he's like, look, I'm trying to do unfinished business. Um, and, uh, and I think we should dive into this and work together and find out what other weapons were out there, other experiments that might've ended up like me because Cap was really one of a kind. They made Captain America and he came out perfect and he worked and there was no flaws for the most part. I mean, other than him, you know, thinking for himself and making up his own mind, but for the most part, he did what he needed to do and he fought for truth, justice and everything. So he was a success, but everyone else after that, and Wolverine eventually became a hero and he was a success, but man, the, the, the road to get there was really hard for him. And so he was like, yeah, there could be other cre you know, people out there or creatures or whatever that might need our help. And so Cap's like, all right, let's go look for him. And so they come across brute force here in the container. They break out and they get in a fight. But meanwhile, what we're going to focus on here, because if I'm going to break down an issue, I might not because I just thought it was OK. It was it was fine. Uh, so but if I talk about it, I'll do it on my Wolverine show, the old man seek show. But um, here I just want to focus on this because it ties all of these characters in together from the Marvel Universe. We have brute force now is now the animal experiment program. Uh, they retconned the the meta reference to to we three and they put in brute force which is cool by r pierce um and then they have uh sulfur project sulfur by ted salas and ted salas that's that's a, a reference to man thing uh and man thing is kind of known as the nexus of the universe in a way he can like teleport beings into other worlds and stuff and uh yeah he's pretty cool i like man thing he's like marvel's version of swamp thing almost um but just with like slightly different powers and power set so uh project sulfur apparently now is part of the weapon program uh then weapon five venom weapon v and this is where i kind of derail a little bit because i'm like eddie brock and his suit are called Venom together. They came up with that name together. Uh, in the movie, the suit for some reason has the name Venom already and it bonds with Eddie Brock and there's no like, they, they don't come up with a name together. Uh, but in the comics, it was it was the union of Eddie Brock and the suit that made themselves Venom. And I always love the explanation the cartoon gave where Eddie Brock says, you know, Spider-Man, we're gonna be like poison to you from now on and that's why we call ourselves Venom. And I always like that explanation a lot because um because that's that shows you right there in one sentence how eddie brock feels about spider-man and peter parker and how active he's going to be in trying to kill him he's going to come at him like poison in a bloodstream and i thought that was awesome so but there's different versions in the comic of of you know how they came up with the name together but the name didn't exist previously so calling this weapon v for venom with Nick Fury at the head of it just seems very lazy. It's like, don't call it Venom, call it something else that starts with a V, uh, but make it about symbiotes, that's fine. But calling it Project Venom, I, I don't know, we'll have to see. Maybe they'll come up with some line like that, like where Nick Fury says, oh, but it's, it seems like such a coincidence. It's like, oh, so the, so if you read Venom, the, the one shot, you'll know that Nick Fury had previous encounters with symbiotes and he used them in Vietnam. So clearly we already knew Weapon 5 happened and it worked and whatever so there you go it, it already existed um so this isn't a big surprise but the fact that it's called project venom i don't remember if that was the case in venom if they mentioned that or not but if they did i completely forgot about it probably because i don't like the idea and now seeing it here again just makes me dislike it again uh if if this is a repeat but i don't think they called it project venom back then so it it's a little frustrating because i'm like i get it you want to be cute weapon v for venom weapon x means x-men wolverine you know it's like but it, it seems to me i'm like you could have called it anything else like why is it called project venom uh but i guess we'll see we'll see where they go with the storyline and why it's called project venom and how nick fury got tied into it because i kind of like nick fury's like the way he dealt with the symbiotes in the clone symbiote in the daniel way run that we talked about so i'm, I'm curious as long as the story's told well Maybe I'll swallow that pill, but it seems like a very hard pill to swallow for me. And then we have Weapon 6 is now uh, Power Man. So if you go off the different ethnicities or ethnic minorities that they said, 
T. Salas, you know, Venom, Power Man, I guess it kind of still fits into that. You know, it doesn't retcon completely, but I don't know. Adding these in seems, it also seems a little weird to me. I like it on one level, but I, I, it could easily come across as really lazy. So I got to see how they do it, you know, because right now this is just the concept that we're being introduced to. But there's a book coming out that's going to flesh this out, apparently. So, uh, but it is neat to see Power Man on the same grid between Captain America and Wolverine. That's pretty awesome because I love Luke Cage. Uh, so, yeah. And then there's apparently trigger phrases that activate these people. And you can see nukes there. Uh, Project Homegrown. They took the lead. Whoever was in charge of that was erased off that board. But you can see is the letters. First letter of each word. November Uniform Kilo Echo spells nuke. So that's it. those are his trigger words. Kind of how like a Winter Soldier was in Civil War, where they say certain words and it, it triggers him and they can control him. Uh, and then Weapon 9 is Psyche. So Weapon 3 and 8 are not on this board. So it looks like they might still be fleshing that out. But anyway, I thought that page was interesting. I thought it was worth talking about that in this article because I want to hear what you guys think of this. You know, what do you think of Venom possibly being tied into, or symbiotes at least, being tied into Marvel lore? I think it could work. I just, I got to see how it, it you know, pays off because we, we know how it kind of begins in a way. Like we know that they're in Vietnam and then we know that Noel kills them, you know, an issue like two or three of the Venom comic or the dragon, you know, whatever. Noel's dragon kills them, uh, the Grendel. So uh, we know that's like their beginning and end. So I guess there's room to tell stories in the middle there. But I, I guess it just depends on what kind of stories they tell. But uh, we're going to find out. We'll definitely dive into this book when it comes out. It's called Weapon Plus Weapons Free which I'm also not a big fan of the title. They have weapon in it twice. It's it's so little frustrating. Um, but yeah, so you see the symbols there. Weapon 2 is brute force. Weapon 4 is man thing. Weapon 5 is symbiotes, I guess, or venom. Uh, weapon 6 is power man. And weapon 9 is psyche, which the, has the comedy and tragedy mass on them. So I don't know. I wanted to bring this to your attention because I don't know how I feel about it yet. Uh, it's uh, It seems frustrating to me but at the same time i feel like there is room to pull this off and i liked ethan Sachs' old man hawkeye i thought that was a really good book so i'm hoping this is pulled off really well but i also hope it's you know it's at least intriguing on some level because this could come across as very lazy like because i see what they're trying to do the movies are successful because they feel like chapters of an ongoing book and so this is them trying to retroactively add chapters to a book and maybe bring more interest to some of these characters like Luke Cage and Man Thing and stuff since Venom is successful right now. And obviously a lot of people love Wolverine and Captain America already. So they're kind of using the success of those characters to draw your eye to these other characters, which I can appreciate. I think that's a really smart way to do that. But again, it all comes down to how they deliver. So we'll find out how they deliver. I'll definitely give my thoughts on this book when it comes out. Weapons Free will come out, I think, later this year. And it's going to dive into these five different weapon programs and we will definitely do a whole episode on whatever story they tell with weapon v here so you guys let me know what you think down below i'll put a link to the article if you want to read it for yourself i'll put that down in the description box below as well i'd love to hear your thoughts on this one because i'm a bit divided I, on one level on one hand i think this could work and on another hand i think this is could be the ultimate lazy way of trying to tie in stories together and and they could half-ass it and it could not work so uh but of course, I'm going to give it a chance because I'm at least intrigued by the concept. And I like that it's building off of stuff that's already been set up by Grant Morrison. And then with the Venom stuff from Donnie Cates, I'm at least willing to give it a chance. Uh, but uh, I want to hear what you guys think. Would you give it a chance? Are you going to give it a chance? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. If you have any questions at all about this, if I didn't clarify something, let me know down below. And I will because I'm I'm at it's been a long day for me. I've already recorded this episode like four times. And this one finally looks like it's actually recorded recording without, without any problems. So hopefully it is. And I'll post it up immediately um, tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. So that you guys have it while I'm at work tomorrow. And then I have my uh, how the venom should have ended reaction trailer reaction. I have that recorded already. And that'll probably go up on Monday morning. So yeah, a lot of venom stuff coming up on this channel. And then we'll get into on next Wednesday or Wednesday coming up, we'll finish our venom versus stuff with the, uh, you know, the, the Venom Vault storyline with the Avengers. So thank you all, as always, for supporting the show, for giving me a chance, uh, for listening to me ramble about this article. Uh, but again, the, you know my thoughts now. I want to hear yours. Let them be known down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm going to go get some sleep, so I'll see you all in the future. Peace.